there is a major assault on free speech going on right now. And it's almost like they used what's going on in Twitter as sort of like a counterattack. So like they are, they had control of Twitter. They lost it. Elon got it. Damn it. It's like, think of it as a battle. So he's got that hill. And now their counterattack to that is now going to be just to go after free speech and demonize free speech. And anybody who would defend free speech as a uh, racist, white supremacist, um, you know, pick whatever label you want. And, and, and this is going to be the way that they go after free speech. And this has been something they've done for a long time. We've seen them try to, like, connect violence to Republican rhetoric and, and stuff like that. You, you see on The View the other day, they said, you know, they had Sonny Hostin up there saying that, uh, oh, Democrats don't get violent. You don't see this violence on the on the Democrat side. It's just the Republican side. That's a lie. You know, obviously, we see lots of, of violence. We saw the GOP baseball game shooting, which I hate that we call it that because it's actually a domestic terrorist attack. It was a domestic terrorist attack in an attempt to assassinate half the GOP Senate, okay, or GOP Congress. Uh, which if he if that guy would have been successful, that's what would have happened. And can you imagine the trouble that would have created in this country if there's got to be new elections because all these Republican senators have been killed? That should be a huge story, but it wasn't. They buried it immediately. The FBI lied about it, called it uh, suicide uh, by cop, and then later changed it to domestic terrorism long after the, you know Republicans could get any use out of it or try to bring it back up and be like, oh, Democrats you know, uh, incited this attack with their rhetoric. Because you remember the shooter yelled, this is for health care. That was a bunch of, that was big rhetoric at the time because Republicans were opposing Obamacare. You had uh, Bernie Sanders out there saying uh, that Republicans want you to die. Well, uh, I'm sorry, that was um, Alan Grayson years before, but uh, Bernie Sanders actually said something very similar. He said, you know, millions of Americans will die if Republicans get their way and that kind of thing. So you could easily make the argument that Democrats incited that, right, based on their own standards. But when he was asked about that by Jake Tapper, if he held, had any accountability for that, he didn't, uh, Tapper did not reference that specifically. He said, uh, are you responsible for violence carried out by your supporters? And this guy, the shooter at the Republican baseball game, actually worked for Bernie Sanders, okay? Bernie Sanders was like, no, I can't be responsible for everything that my supporters do and say. If that were the case, I'd be apologizing constantly. Exactly. You cannot blame Bernie Sanders for what that guy did. It's something you can only implement one way as, as a weapon, and that's what they do. And so now we're seeing um, these hearings going on. And this is how Elon is, is mixed in this, because these hearings are going on and they're trying to say that, oh, uh, because Elon bought Twitter, now there's all this violence happening to trans people, even though they don't bring up any examples. Already receptive to that message, take it to heart, and it reinforces their prejudices. In their minds, trans people either become victims to be saved from ourselves. One example of this in action is the misuse of the term groomer. Anti-LGBTQ activists have appropriated this terminology used by survivors of childhood sexual abuse and used it to slander LGBTQ people and our allies as predatory. Olivia Hunt is up there saying, claiming that, oh, free speech is dangerous because there's people online uh, taking the term groomer and applying it to gay and trans people, uh, and this is being done to incite violence against them. First of all, the term groomer is being used exactly how it's supposed to be used. She's, uh, uh, Olivia just said there that groom, uh, grooming is when uh, uh, a child uh, you know, is, ha suffers sexual abuse as a child, and, and, and that's grooming. This is exactly why it's being called grooming now. What's happening is that people on Twitter uh, or wherever else, uh, TikTok, they're retweeting videos of uh, trans and gay people uh, in the form of drag queens dancing and stripping for children. In some cases, the kids putting money in their G-strings. In some cases, like bare man ass right in the face of a little girl as he, you know, uh, you know, shakes his ass in her face, teaching her to do the same thing. I mean, that's the things that we're calling grooming, okay? We're not, there's no, like, attempt to connect that to gay and trans people. It just so happens that the people that are partaking in this activity that we're calling out happen to be gay and trans or drag queens. I don't know that drag queens are considered trans. Uh, so I wouldn't even say that it is trans. It's just drag queens mostly. And anybody who would support, you know, uh, like what's the whole point of connecting a grown man who's dressed in an over-sexualized costume reading to kids? So in the media, you'll always see this. You'll see them they're like, this is what the right wingers are upset about? This person just reading this story about a princess to these children? Uh, no, no, that's not what people are upset about. Although it's still questionable. It's just like, why? The question is why? Their answer would be, oh, well, it's making the kids more inclusive and uh, they won't be hate mongers. 
You're gonna have to explain how that happens. The it's very it's very odd, and it's very odd that the media will not play these videos that people like Libs of TikTok and Gays Against Groomers will retweet videos that these people upload themselves. Uh, teachers who are obsessed with like gender this uh, gender ideology and pushing it on their kids and affirming themselves through the children. Lots of just like really weird behavior, including, and you'll see it, uh, I think I've got a clip here from the same hearing where they straight up say that the parents have no say in the children. If children as young as 13 want to start uh, get on hormone therapy or change their gender or whatever, that's grooming. Like when a, an adult is taking the child and, and blocking it from people who care about, care about them and love them and want to protect them, uh, that's grooming, especially when the person that's saying that is claiming that they're trying to keep the person safe. It's very odd and weird. And again, it's very strange that they're using this as an attack on free speech. Like there, there's no way you can connect these things that this person's talking about. You cannot say that because people are getting called out as groomers. That's leading to violence against trans people. Like there's no connection there. I find it funny that they're now complaining about being called groomers when these people regularly have no troubles calling people they disagree with racists they throw that they throw that around like it's they got a million grenades behind them. they throw my like, gr like grenades to, to shut you up so racist white supremacists white nationalists uh far right right-wing extremists um you, you, domestic uh, threats what uh, semi-fascist the the president called 100 million Americans semi-fascist, but we cannot call them groomers. In reality, trans people are significantly more likely to be the victims of sexual abuse than perpetrators of it. And now this misused terminology has become part of the political discourse around trans people and is invoked as a reason to further restrict our rights in the name of protecting children. In the name of protecting children. He, he, Olivia is so dismissive of that. And what rights exactly? You don't have a right to, to strip in front of kids. You don't have a right to, uh, you, you know, to push your values and your ideology on kids. Like, what rights are they taught? Is this person talking about? I have no idea. I never do. I ask all the time on Twitter. Nobody ever responds. This person gives no examples of what rights. Everything that this person says is very generalized and broad, very nebulous, you know, it, and it's meant, it's meant to be that way. Even hospitals have been targeted with bomb threats and intimidation tactics based on social media figures spreading baseless stories that the providers are, in their words, mutilating children. And they are. They, you know, tons of proof of that out there, straight from the hospitals and their websites themselves, which they later scrubbed, okay? They didn't scrub it because they they didn't think they had something that they needed to hide, right? They, they obviously thought they needed to hide that and did. And there are countless stories about uh, transitioning, uh, you know, young kids, you know, 13 years old and younger, uh, so that's not true. And, you know, about these bomb threats and everything, like all the all the crap that they talk about Trump and Trump supporters and Republicans in general, Elon Musk, like, do they ever worry that their uh, language incites violence against this? And like I just got done talking about the GOP baseball game shooting, but that issue was never raised. And it's because all they care about, they... These people, they've got some sort of psychological problem where they're incapable of applying their own standards, which they want to hold everybody to, to themselves. And that's because in their minds, what they're doing is for the greater good. They think what they're doing is good and what you're doing is bad. And so if, if this person has to get up there and just lie and attack your free speech and apply standards that this person knows will never be, that they'll never be held to, that's okay. You know, it, it's it's like uh, the the Sam Harris interview, if you guys saw that, where he said that, oh, yes, there was a left wing conspiracy to uh, sway the election for Biden, of course, because and he said, you know, we had to do that because imagine and I couldn't believe it. Like, I couldn't believe that because I thought Sam Harris was intelligent. And then he said that. But then he said to rationalize it. OK, because this is clearly like authoritarian uh, behavior. So in his mind, he's not an authoritarian. He would never support authoritarianism. So he must have done it for a good reason. And the reason he gives is because Trump was like a speeding meteor coming towards the earth that would wipe out all life. So in that, if there was a meteor coming towards earth, wouldn't you do anything you could to stop it? And that's the, that is the danger with these people. Bear culpability for the violence that ensues. No, they don't. That's insane. The Williams Institute. He, he. Uh, uh, Olivia there said that Elon Musk bears and, and people who, who who call out groomers and people who strip for children, grown men that strip, strip for, 
that we are culpable for any violence that happens. And no evidence is given of this violence, by the way. And uh, I, I want to also show you what Biden said yesterday, because it ties into this. Excuse me, because they support LGBTQ ch children and families, we have to speak out. We must stop the hate and violence like we just saw in Colorado Springs, where a place of acceptance and celebration. Yeah, the place where the non-binary person shot up a place. It's just like the other shooting, the Pulse nightclub, where the gay guy shot up the nightclub. Like, they, they want to make these things about their their narratives, but they're not. And they just lie. He's just lying. Like, we already know this guy. It was not, like, some anti-gay guy. You, you know, you, you quit hearing about that guy in that story totally. Because if they report about it... And, and it's just like the, uh, the the shooting that happened at the, um, at the nail salon. The white guy, and they try to say, well, it was this racist shooting, even though... He shot everybody. He, he didn't just shoot Asian people, and he said himself it had nothing to do with that. These people are just insane. But the president here is lying, and he's going to call you a racist, a homophobe, a transphobe, and every other phobe and ism if you don't agree with him. Was targeted for violence and terror. We need to challenge the hundreds of callous, cynical laws introduced in the states targeting transgender children, terrifying families. What laws targeting tra like? There's no such thing. He's lying. And criminalizing doctors who give children the care they need. We have to protect these children so they know they're loved and we will stand up for them and say they can seek for themselves. What? Children? Children? Oh, God. Folks, racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia, they're all connected. <laughs> but the antidote to hate is love. Oh. This law. Yeah, you're shouting and yelling and, 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 and smearing of. See, like, look at. He's just throwing labels at anybody. Like, anybody. You're a homophobe, a racist, a transphobe. But if you call me a groomer, then you're inciting violence against me. <laughs>